The Amazon is a colossal mystery. First of all, to give some basic figures, the Amazon basin is huge. The Amazon basin is 7 million square kilometers in area. Um, and within it, 5.5 million square kilometers uh, remains almost entirely unstudied by archaeologists. And that's the five and a half million square kilometers that is still covered by dense rainforest. And to put that into perspective, five and a half million square kilometers is the size of the entire Indian subcontinent. Five and a half million square kilometers, the view was, again, there was a dogma, there was a preconception. Human beings couldn't have flourished in the Amazon. It's a, it's not a resource rich area. The soils are poor. Um, it's a difficult area, challenging to get to very far from the Bering Straits. So the view was that humans hadn't entered the Amazon until about a thousand years ago. And then gradually, little by little, that view has begun to change. And it's begun to change because of the tragic clearances of the Amazon, because the Amazon rainforest is literally being cut down and turned into soya bean farms and, uh, and cattle ranches. And in that cutting down process has emerged things that shouldn't be there at all. Uh, for example, evidence that large cities flourished in the Amazon, enormous cities, which were larger then the, there was a Spanish explorer who went down the Amazon River system in 1541 to 1542. He was the first European to cross the entire length of South America from west to east uh, along the Amazon. He reported seeing incredible cities, advanced arts and crafts, millions of people, a thriving culture. Uh, and 100 years later, when other Europeans got into the Amazon, they couldn't find these cities. So they said, oh, Francisco Oriana, that was his name, made it all up. It was just a, it was just a fantasy. And then in the last decade, as the clearances of the Amazon have proceeded, we've begun to see the traces of those cities. What happened was that the Spaniards brought smallpox into the Amazon. Oh. Smallpox devastated the local population because there was no immunity to it. There was a massive die off. The cities were deserted. Within a 50 years, they were completely overgrown by the jungle. And that's why they were not seen by the explorers who came in 100 years later. But now the jungle is being cleared. Those cities are emerging. And we can say that uh, a city like London, which had a population of roughly 50,000 in the 16th century, there were cities of that size all over the Amazon, wow. huge numbers of them. And a possible total population of the Amazon that exceeded 20 million people. This is the, the latest uh, evidence from the Amazon. And then you ask yourself, how did they do that? How did they feed 20 million people in the Amazon? Because it's a fact, rainforest soils are poor. It's one of the reasons these soya bean farms are a really stupid idea, because once you clear the rainforest, the land is largely unfertile and you can't grow stuff on it for very long. So how did they feed all these people? The answer was, they invented a soil. And that soil has a name, it's called Terra Preta. Archaeologists refer to it as Amazonian dark earths or Amazonian black earth. It's a man-made soil. It's thousands of years old. It's full of microbes that are not found in adjoining soil. It's based around biochar. Uh, and you can take a handful of 8,000-year-old terra preta and you can add it to barren soil and that soil will instantly become fertile. It's highly sought after in the Amazon and it explains how they fed these people. There was science in the Amazon. Well, this is something that's not understood. It's still not understood by soil experts to this day as to how that was done. But it's one of many intriguing evidences pieces of evidence of much higher uh, development in the Amazon that it has been given credit for and of a kind of science in the Amazon. One way that it was achieved was, uh, was to do wet burning um, of middens. They would, be, they would be burned and smolder. They wouldn't burn fiercely, which just produces charcoal. They would, they would burn and smolder. Um, and, and that, bi what is called biochar, would result. And that's part of the fertility of the soil. But the mystery is the microbial content of this soil, which is completely different from the microbes uh, in neighboring soils. And that remains unexplained. Some sort of advanced composting. But again, what has not been seen is the, mi is the mi microbial uh, content of these soils. So there, there, first of all, is an issue of how, uh, two things, how large populations get fed in the Amazon and evidence that there was a culture in the Amazon that was capable of manipulating the environment in such a way that it could support large populations with the invention of Terra Preta. Secondly, new evidence previously not recognized, the Amazon is basically a garden. The Amazon is a man-made rainforest. Uh, 
there are certain trees like Brazil nut trees or the ice cream bean tree, which are food crops, which are very, very valuable. And they dominate the, uh, the, the tree regime in, in the Amazon. They're what's, what's referred to as hyperdominant species. In other words, people living in the Amazon over thousands of years selected certain trees, which they then cultivated and grew. So the whole thing is not simply a wild, pristine rainforest. It's a very ancient man-made environment. And emerging from that man-made environment, as well as evidence of large cities, large populations, and this mysterious dark earth, are huge geometrical structures. We have in the UK structures that are called henges. And what a henge is, is a ditch which has been dug deep, and then an embankment has been pushed up outside the ditch. A henge is an earthwork which consists of a deep moat with a large embankment outside it, and it can be circular, it can be square, and in the UK and other parts of Europe, it often contains stone circles, megalithic uh, stone circles as well, but the henge itself is entirely an earthwork. What we find in the Amazon are thousands of henges that are now beginning to emerge from the cleared area of the jungle and others that have been identified for the first time with LIDAR. LIDAR technology is being employed in the Amazon. It's non-destructive. You can see what's under the trees. Uh, light imaging and detective ra radar. They mm. bounce laser beams down into the jungle. A whole pattern of them. You need helicopters, and they, they, but it doesn't damage the rainforest. Guatemala is a small country, if I remember correctly. It's not much more than 100,000 square kilometers in size. Um, it is filled with intriguing Mayan ruins. Uh, everybody has heard of uh, Tikal. Mm -hmm. What archaeologists didn't know was that literally within walking distance of Tikal, surrounding that whole area were more than 60,000 structures that they hadn't identified. And these have all been identified by LIDAR in a country that's just 100,000 kilometers in area. So you have to ask yourself, in that five and a half million square kilometers of the Amazon, if LIDAR technology could be applied comprehensively, what would we find beneath there? And the evidence already is extremely tempting and extremely tantalizing. And I'm intrigued by these huge geometrical figures, uh, which involve primarily uh, circles and squares. And they are classic hinges in the sense that they are deep ditches surrounded by huge embankments. They're extremely geometrical. For example, you can find an octagon surrounding a square. Uh, at a place called Jacosa in the Amazon, you can find a square perfectly enclosing a circle. Now that is an exercise called squaring the circle that our, archae our, our academics have given to the Greeks. They said the Greeks were the first person, people who performed that exercise. But now we find in dated sites in the Amazon that this was being done in the Amazon long before the Greeks. Uh, the earliest dates that have been found in these sites now are about three and a half thousand years old about three and a half thousand years old. But the evidence is that the sites have been constantly remade. And what intrigues me is what remains in that five and a half million square kilometers that has not been investigated yet. We are just, I think, looking at the edges of a mystery. The archaeologists involved, who are mainly from Finland and also from Brazil, feel the same. Their, their estimate is that there are thousands of these structures remaining in the jungle, and they're open as to how old they may ultimately be prove to be. The investigation needs to be done. But what's fascinating about them is this very powerful geometry and astronomy. So a number of the sites are perfectly aligned to true north, true south, true east, and true west. I'm not talking about magnetic north. I'm talking about true astronomical north. To do that, there's only one way to do it, and that's with, uh, with astronomy. So that tells us that astronomers were at work in the Amazon. The geometry is very complex and very precise. That tells us that people with geometrical skills were at work in the Amazon. And thirdly, the scale of the sites of hundreds of meters, gigantic earthworks on the scale of hundreds of meters, uh, tells us that this was highly organized uh, project that was undertaken uh, on a very large scale by very large numbers of people. It's a wonderful mystery and, and it deserves much further, much further attention. Initially, it was entirely found because areas of the rainforest had been cleared economic interest said, we want to make a cattle ranch here, or we want to make a soya bean farm here. So we're just going to clear the rainforest. In the process of clearing the rainforest, they start discovering these earthworks that had previously been completely overgrown by the jungle. Then the next step was to say, uh, what can we, what could we do to find out more about this? Obviously, they don't want to destroy more jungle. And luckily, we have a technology, which is, which is LIDAR, as I mentioned, which uses radar. And using LIDAR, they've been identified, able to identify many more of these sites. And then to get to the sites, 
without destroying the jungle and to begin excavations on them and to find that they go back in the cases of the ones that have been explored so far, at least 3,000 years. Uh, this is an intriguing development, completely unexplained in our understanding of the Amazon. And what it suggests is a heritage of extremely ancient knowledge. You don't wake up one morning and you know create a perfectly geometrical square or circular earthwork that's perfectly aligned to true north, south, east and west on an enormous scale. There has to be a background to that. There has to be a reason for doing it. And the evidence is none of these sites were lived in. There's no habitation uh, refuse uh, found in them whatsoever. They were, they, we, d we don't know what they were used for. I make the case that they're connected to a system of ideas which is found all around the world, which, which is to do with death and the afterlife destiny uh, of the soul.